So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, apostrophes as they are used on the SAT and ACT. Uh, most of this worksheet here that we've made uh, references the ACT specifically, but the usage of the apostrophes is obviously the same on both. They're relatively, um, the questions occur with relatively the same frequency. So let's talk about the two different uses of the apostrophe, one on nouns, one on pronouns. Um, so here, Let's start with the nouns. So when we use an apostrophe on a noun, it almost always signifies possession. So we're going to focus specifically on the possession here. And the key here is that it does not necessarily mean physical possession. So let's take a look at two examples to illustrate the difference between physical possession and not literal possession, uh, where maybe we're not talking about a specific item or like a physical tangible thing. So the first one is a physical possession here. We have John made the cat's dinner. So here, the dinner quite literally belongs to the cat. And the apostrophe signifies that the cat owns the next noun. In the next case, we have don't forget, excuse me, don't question the organization's philosophy. So we have the organization and the philosophy and the philosophy belongs to the organization but in this case you could see that it's not literally a possession like the organization does not literally own a tangible item called a philosophy it's just the philosophy of the business or the philosophy of the organization or the philosophy that belongs to metaphorically speaking the organization so it does not have to be literal but it does have to be one noun kind of taking ownership of another noun both of these are uh, possessive apostrophes on singular nouns, meaning it is one cat that owns the dinner and one organization that owns the philosophy. When we pluralize a noun, we typically append an S to that noun. So, how would we indicate possession on that? Would we do S apostrophe S? Well, actually we wouldn't. If we, anytime we want to place S apostrophe S, we should just place S apostrophe instead. Now, there is an exception to that because there are certain singular nouns that end in S. Typically, that has to do with a name uh, or a word like news. Uh, and in that case, we can actually do it either way. But generally speaking, we're just going to use S apostrophe instead. So let's take a look at another example here. John made the cat's dinner. Same sentence as before, but this time I placed the apostrophe after the S. So in this case, the dinner belongs not to one cat, but to multiple cats. And the easiest way to actually check that is just to see what is left of the apostrophe. So look at the original one here. We have to the left of the apostrophe, the one cat. Uh, look at the apostrophe here. To the left of the apostrophe is one organization. Here, to the left of the apostrophe, there are many cats, so clearly the dinner belongs to multiple cats. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the next example here. Diehard sports fans will follow their team's schedules obsessively. So here we have the schedules that belong to the teams, and once again, you'll see that the apostrophe is after the S. And we can go ahead and just look at what's left of the apostrophe. And clearly, this means multiple teams. And again, the schedules don't literally belong to the team, so whereas this is a literal possession, this one is not. Also note, there are no apostrophes on the words sports, fans, or schedules. None of those are possessives. The schedule doesn't quote-unquote own anything. Okay? Nor do the fans, nor do the sports. Now, there is actually a case to be made for possibly putting... Um, an apostrophe on sports here, but generally we don't. We just use the word sports as an adjective to describe the type of fans. Though I guess you could technically put an apostrophe here and say that the fans belong to the sports. In that particular case, either way is correct, and you'd never encounter an ambiguous question like that on the test. So let's take a look further at that last point, which is uh, a case of overusing apostrophes. Many baseball fans will readily admit that beginners can find the game daunting owing to the sport's many very specific rules. Here we have one apostrophe, and it is on the word sport, because the rules belong to the sport. And again, we could take a look, and it, we see a clear possession, even though it's not literal. 
the rules are the rules of that sport. And left of the apostrophe is the singular sport, which refers to baseball. And if we look at the next sentence, serious baseball fans argue adamantly that the complexity of the game is what makes it one of the most interesting sports. Yeah, we have the word sports again, but in this case, the sport nor the sports, neither one of those things actually own anything. So we do not put an apostrophe here. And this is commonly going to be an answer choice. There's usually going to be an answer choice with an apostrophe here on the S if this portion is underlined. Um, why? I'm not really sure. I don't really know why it's such a common error, because if we were writing this sentence, we'd never actually put an apostrophe there. But for some reason, students are tempted to put an apostrophe there if it's an answer choice. So don't fall for that. Make sure that you have a clear possession, whether it's literal or not. Now, we can actually change something about this sentence if we want to make it an apostrophe. So here we have the complexity of the game. We could, if we want to, rewrite that as the game's complexity. Because then the complexity would belong, quote unquote, uh, not literally, but still possess a form to the game. So that would be fine as well. So here I've put up some practice questions. And uh, if you would like, you can now pause the video. Uh, and you can go ahead and try these either on a separate sheet of paper or if you have a tablet right on your screen. If you've chosen to do the questions, we'll now go over them. Uh, if you did not do them, uh, you can still follow along as I do them. So here, I would recommend that on your visit to Montreal, you explore the city's European architectural features. And the purpose of the exercise here is to place an apostrophe wherever necessary. Well, the only thing that's a clear possession here is that the features, the architectural features, belong to the city. And since the plural of cities, uh, of city, excuse me, would be cities with I-E-S, I know that this is going to be singular, that the one city is going to own the features. And also, I'm referencing the word uh, the city of Montreal. So here we're going to put the apostrophe before the S. Number two, uh, Jared's grades have really suffered since he began taking three additional classes. And here, the only possession here is that the grades belong to Jared. And again, it's pretty clear using some context that Jared is a singular noun. So we're going to place the apostrophe before the S again. Number three, have you been to Ali's parents' cabin? Here we actually have two possessions, and this one is a little bit tricky. And the more obvious one here is going to be that the cabin belongs to the parents. Now, we wouldn't generally say uh, parent as a singular noun in this case, uh, because we would just say mothers or fathers. So in this case, it's fairly clear that the apostrophe should go after the S because the cabin belongs to the parents. But also... The parents belong to Allie. They are her parents. And Allie is a singular person, so we're going to put the apostrophe here before the S. Number four. My friends have many eclectic interests ranging from football to sculpting. And there is kind of a trap uh, in this question, because we do have a possession, as indicated by the word have, uh, but that's just a verb. That's an action. So, in this case, we are tempted to put one here, either before the S or after the S, but it's not like my friend's interests I include, or my friend's interests range. We actually have a verb, so we have a, a subject and a verb, so there's actually no apostrophe here, anywhere in this sentence. And if we look at all of the um, nouns, none of them, quote-unquote, own any other noun in a literal sense, or in a figurative sense. It's not my friend's interests. The interests don't own anything. And uh, that's it. We don't have to take a look at any of the other ones here. <clears throat> Number five, we hope that you enjoyed all of the town's offerings during your stay. And here we have the offerings that belong to the town. Now, in this case, we actually do have a bit of an ambigu uh, ambiguity in this one, because I don't necessarily know whether we're referring to one town or many, because there's no context here. So if you want to say that this is one town, you would put the apostrophe before the S. Uh, however, you could actually make the case that this could be referring to many towns, and the apostrophe after the S wouldn't be wrong either. And again, on the test, you would not encounter something 
uh, with that type of ambiguity. Finally, number six, the players on the field could feel the fans' energy pulsing through the old dilapidated arena's walls. Uh, so here, we've got a couple. We've got the energy that belongs to the fans, and we can assume that there's more than one fan. So we're going to put that after the S. The energy belongs to the fans. And the walls belong to the arena. That is one singular arena. So we're going to put that uh, before the S. So hopefully if you guys uh, attempted these questions, you did well with them. Let's move on to talking about the use of apostrophes on pronouns. Uh, and unfortunately here, the usage of apostrophes on pronouns is basically completely opposite to their usage on nouns, uh, meaning we're not actually going to be using apostrophes for possession. So whenever we place an apostrophe on a pronoun, uh, the apostrophe never represents possession. So let's first quickly recap pronouns. Pronouns are things that replace nouns without explicitly naming that noun. So we have things like it, they, who, he, she, etc., etc., etc. There's plenty more of them. Uh, so in the case of apostrophes on pronouns, uh, Apostrophes are going to represent contractions. A contraction meaning uh, the removal of one of the words or the contracting of two of the words into one. Meaning, if I have it apostrophe s, it is going to be it is or it has. And almost always is just going to be it is. If you actually want uh, it's as a possessive, like belonging to it, we do not put an apostrophe. We'll occasionally also see the answer choice uh, its apostrophe which uh, is not a thing at all. That's not English. There's no such thing as ITS apostrophe, and any answer choice that features that should just be crossed out immediately. The same thing happens with the word who, where who apostrophe s does not mean belonging to whom. It actually means who is or who has, much like it. And if you want to show the possessive on who, like belonging to whom, uh, this would actually be whose, W-H-O-S-E. And uh, this is a really, really common mistake, and part of this can be attributed to uh, autocorrect on our phones and spell check on Microsoft Word. Um, these words all sound the same. They are, and there, and there, uh, but they mean three completely different things. Because they is a pronoun, any apostrophe on that is always going to be a contraction, so we have they are. T-H-E-I-R, that's the possessive form of, belo of them, so meaning belonging to them. And T-H-E-R-E, -E, that's altogether different. That's actually a location. So over there. And the same thing obviously goes with you. You is a pronoun. For instance, if we have you are, like so, that's you are. And your is the possessive. And uh, there really is no third one here, but that's also a common error. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. Uh, so if I have uh, Brian's dog finished its food quickly. So here we have the dog that belongs to Brian because Brian is a noun. So the apostrophe here indicates possession. So try replacing the it apostrophe s with it is. Uh, it would read Brian's dog finished it is food quickly. Well, that's clearly wrong. So clearly we're not trying to use it apostrophe s. And instead we should just change this to ITS, which is a possessive. And once again here, if you want to pause and try these practice questions, in these we're just going to choose one form or the other. I'm going to stop for about five seconds here. If you feel like uh, doing these questions, just pause uh, the video and then we'll resume with the answers. All right, let's go through the answers here. Uh, number one, the sports car came with a defective battery, so it left its owner stranded at a shopping mall. Well, if I say it with an apostrophe, it would mean, so it left it is owner stranded at a shopping mall. That's clearly incorrect. So we should just use a possessive, meaning the owner belongs to it. That is the car. Number two, 
Volunteer firemen, whose services often go unnoticed except in dire emergencies, should be given more recognition. Here, uh, again, look at who apostrophe s, and that would read who is. Volunteer firemen, who is services often go unnoticed. That's obviously clearly incorrect, so we should use whose, meaning belonging to whom. It is their services. Number three. The students were extremely excited. Uh, their summer break was just about an hour away. Here, again, this would represent they are. So they are summer break. That's obviously incorrect. There, T-H-E-R-E, -E, is a location. T-H-E-I-R is a possessive. That is the summer break belonging to them, which is the students. And that is the correct answer. Number four, the district manager who's responsible for overseeing 17 stores, has done a fantastic job handling his voluminous duties. So here, would it make sense to say who is responsible for overseeing 17 stores? It would. So the answer here is who apostrophe S. And number five, uh, it's a shame that so few people appreciate spending time in nature. So this uh, would be, it is a shame. Uh, because that would clearly work. It is a shame that so few people appreciate spending time in nature, and there is no possessive in that case. So that's basically it. There are a couple of quick notes I want to go over here. Uh, the first note is that these are not the only uses of apostrophes. They're just the most common in daily use and in testing situations. We can use apostrophes on nouns as contractions, but I, I, I don't recall ever seeing that on an ACT or an SAT, so we don't worry about that. And uh, this is another one here. The contraction apostrophe VE is frequently used as the word have. So if we say should have, could have, must have, would have, etc., etc., that's never should of OF or could of OF or must of. These are not real English either. Uh, instead, what we're actually saying is should apostrophe VE, which means should have, never should of. So when we say should of, there's nothing wrong with that, except we're really saying is should apostrophe VE, not should OF. So just be aware of that. They do come up from time to time. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. You can check out the rest of our videos on the SAT and ACT. We've got videos on math, reading, uh, English, and science. We've got a few other specific grammar ones as well. Uh, if you have any questions or requests, please put them in the comments section. Uh, we will do our best to accommodate if you want any specific questions or topics covered. And again, thank you for watching.